Hello and welcome. It has been six months since I bought my Trek Stash 7. And it's been a crazy six months. <laughs> 2020, am I right? Basically what I wanted to do today is, when I first made my review of the Trek Stash, it was on the day I got it, so I couldn't really give you a lot of insight. I'll just put my phone away. So I couldn't give you a lot of insight, but this time around, I now have been riding it all season, and I'm ready to tell you the upgrades I felt like I needed to do, um, which weren't a lot by any means. It's basically, you know, it's ready to go right out of the box, and, and <laughs> you really don't have to do more, more like personal comfort. We'll get into that. Um, the pros of the bike, and there are actually a couple cons that I ran into. Um, but yeah, we'll get right into it. Okay, so this is a 2019. But I think everything I go over should be pretty relevant to the 2020. I just went ahead and looked at the spokes. <laughs> the spokes. <laughs> I just looked at the specs. And what I saw is basically it's the same bike for 19 and 20. However, it looks like the 2020 has a worse drivetrain. It has the SX where this is NX, the whole thing. Um, I think it only has SX. Cranks? No. Don't quote me on that, but it's basically the same bike. So first, let's talk upgrades. And like I said, I did not do much. Um, so I like the ESI grips. Uh, these are the extra chunkies. Uh, they're, they're nice. I, I had them on my old bike. I really have only tried a couple grips, and I have no complaints with these, so I, I've just always put them on my bikes. I, I didn't mind the ones that came stock on this, it's just I clipped a tree and they just shredded in half. So it was more of a purchase out of necessity. But yeah, it's been great. I, I love the ESI grips, uh, 10 out of 10. The other upgrade I did right when I bought it is going to be the pedals. I have the Candy 2s. Um, Again, I, I've had candies on all my mountain bikes and it's just a preference thing, so can't go wrong. Uh, it's almost embarrassing that that's all I've done to this bike, but that should be a testament to how out of the box and ready to roll it is. So let's get the, the dirty out of the way. Let's talk about the cons, the, the most detrimental. And what it's been for me is the back wheel has been popping spokes like crazy. I think I've gone through, or basically just I'm in the bike shop once a month and apparently I'm not the only stash owner uh, who has this problem. So uh, I've been there enough that they are actually warrantying my wheel now. Warrantying? They're, they're giving me a new <laughs> wheel. So. Um, Apparently it's pretty common with this. Um, at first I just thought it was, you know, a heavier rider on a, a beefier bike hitting some trails pretty hard, but then it just kept happening and happening. So um, they, they fixed me up, they popped a new spoke on there for, for the time being. Uh, manufacturing is hard to get a new wheel, so uh, hopefully in time for next year, that's all we can hope for. Um, but yeah, that's something to keep in mind. It, it, I can only speak from what I heard at the bike shop and, and my own experience, but apparently they're popping spokes. One other negative, and I think it has to do with the wheel anyways, that like we're getting replaced. Uh, I had this thing where whenever I'm in Eagle, the drivetrain would be like rubbing against the spokes. And I don't, I think it was the flex of the spokes or something, but I could only use 10 gears most of the season. Um, it was out of fear because I popped the spokes the, the, the couple times. So when I get into that eagle, I, I hear like a, a dung or like a, you know, like when you flick a spoke, just like every other pedal. And something about that just like had me scared every time. So I barely went past uh, 11. I said, or yeah, I, I stayed at 11 is what I'm trying to say. Again, I think just all tied to the wheel, we're getting a new one. So I guess, uh, we can still count that as just one con. Um, the other cons really just come down to personal preference. I want to talk about the three inch wheels because those are both a pro and a con in my opinion. I love the extra cushion. I love being able to just monster truck through the entire trail. I am a 
a tank on this thing and it's like floating over a cloud. However, um, and I mentioned this on my first video and you really lose some the, the nimbleness with these three inch tires. Uh, I'm, I'm torn though. So as I mentioned, teased at the beginning is winter's coming and three inch is the minimum to do fat biking. So technically with the three inch tires, I might be able to sneak a couple runs in the winter. So that has what, that has been the main thing that stopped me from getting uh, smaller wheels. So here's the deal. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try this for fat biking, which I, for the record, don't think it's going to be good. I, I, you gotta have bigger wheels than three inches, but hey, maybe it'll be fun. But then, to kick off next season, I'm gonna get some, I wanna get tan sidewalls, just like gorgeous looking, 2.5 inches on this. And this bike will be unstoppable. I, oh, I can't wait, it's gonna be so good. Don't quote me on this. I talked to the bike shop. They think you can. They think that you could fit 2.5s on here. Um, so that's what I'm gonna go with. And the other pros is for the price point, you are getting everything you need. You could find these used right now. I just I just looked at this exact same bike for about 18, which you you know that's the the listing price. So you could probably get it for 16 or 17, and it's everything you need to hit the trails for that like medium rider, uh, medium to advanced, where you're not looking for full carbon, you're just looking for a, a full do-it-all trail bike, that's what this is. I can do XC, I can hit a jump here and then, I can take on technical stuff, and it's, I almost said it's never failed me. Uh, it's failed a little bit just with that back wheel, but um, I think you're going to be happy with this, whether you go with the 2019, 2020. It, it's a tank. Uh, the best thing about mountain bikes nowadays is if there's something bad about it, upgrades are so easy and they're fun. So, uh, for instance, like I did not like the dropper post. Um, I was about to switch to like, just like a straight carbon, um, uh, carbon seat post. And then I had, uh, I do a podcast all about mountain biking, um, Local Roots podcast, check it out. Uh, and we had uh, a gentleman on just preaching the love of uh, using dropper posts. So I started using it more. And I recommend you do the same. It, it really makes a difference. When you get that instinct to like drop down right before a descent, you just like, you have so much more, um, you're able to compensate for that like lack of nimbleness I was talking about before. So. Uh, keeping the dropper post and man, there's just really not much else that it needs. It, it, I think once we get those smaller tires, next year's we're, we're coming in strong. <laughs> um, so yeah, that probably does it. That is the 2019-2020 Trek Stash 7. Again, for that price point around 2000 and being able to, like in Michigan where there is fat biking, to maybe have like a a quiver of one when it comes to your bike that's pretty impressive we'll see I'll, I'll do one last video on this on if you can use this for fat biking which I think will be interesting <laughs> uh, so anyway thank you for watching we have a awesome podcast with all your favorite youtubers we've had biking with Bobo we've had the Crashing Dad, we've had Paul the Punter, we've had the Duke of NTB, we've had Biker, apologies for anyone else I'm forgetting, but all your mountain bike favorites, come check it out, Local Roots Podcast, you're going to like it, I hope, <laughs> if not, you can turn it off, that's the beauty of a podcast. Um, oh, one more con, um, one more smaller con. I had a heck of a time finding a bike rack for this. Um, I did not want one that touches the frame. Um, so what I found was the Trek, the Trek, man, I'm losing it. So what I found was the Fuel T2, Fuely or Thule, I don't know, whatever, you know what I mean? The T2 Classic. It is built for like a fat bike or a road bike because I needed something that fits regular 29ers if I go riding with my buddy or to fit my wife's bike in there. So this was the do-it-all bike rack. If you are looking for a bike rack and you have these bigger plus tires, um, definitely recommend the Fuel, uh, whatever, 
uh, T2 Classic. I've also had one other bike rack that I loved even more, and it was the Rocky Mount Split Rail. That thing kicked butt. I had to get rid of it though because I got a new car with a bigger hitch. So those two bike racks, uh, a little pricier, though you're gonna spend a good two or three hundred even on the used market, but worth it. Um, they have like a locking system too, so you can feel safe and secure. Um, it's been a great season. This bike's got me through. I wish I would have been able to do some races with it, but unfortunately everything was canceled. Uh, lots of fun rides though, and, and this will probably be my bike for the next couple years. No, no upgrades for the next couple of years. Um, no real, uh, any anything I'm missing on it, I feel like I can, like I said earlier, I can just upgrade it. So, um, that's that. Again, any questions, let me know. Check out the podcast.